Have you ever thought about migration? How people move and why we move? And have you ever played with the idea that actually not a single one of us would be here on the Orland Islands if it weren't for migration? People move all the time, and the reason why is rooted in conditions and opportunities. If a person chooses to stay, depends on the same thing, conditions and opportunities. And it's all combined with expectations and levels of participation. I will not go all the way back to the beginning of the migration as a phenomenon, nor the start of humanity, but a little bit of history is always good for perspectives. First, I will give you a, a question to bear in mind. Is staying where you are an attractive alternative, or are your opportunities better elsewhere? You know that a lot of Scandinavians migrated to America, right? In the year 1900, at a time when Sweden had 5.5 million inhabitants, the city with the largest population of Swedes was the capital of Sweden, Stockholm, and at the second place was Chicago. Nevertheless, it was not only people from Sweden, Orland Islands, Finland, Norway, Denmark that migrated. The migration was from all over Europe. And the migration was big. Did you know that during a period of 74 years, between 1840 and 1914, it is estimated that 50 million Europeans migrated to America? 50 million. And the reason, the conditions. There were unemployment, poverty, starvation, malnutrition, and religious persecution. And during the same time, an active welcoming campaign from America was screaming out one opportunity after another. Get land of your own, get a job, become rich, find gold, start a new life, and participate in building a new country. The campaign sent out an endless stream of opportunities with the message that you were both welcome and highly needed. The expectations were clear. You would be included in building a new country. In return, the country wanted you to be an active, productive inhabitant. The shortage of workers combined with immigration made it possible for many dreams to come true. After finding work, it was coming to send money home for food or tickets to the loved one left behind. The dream of a better life was clear for everyone. When you migrate to another country, you will be facing different challenges. And yes, it is a fact that no matter how prepared you are, not everything will be predictable. Social codes and local expressions are some examples of that. Why, actually, why is every conversation, or almost every conversation here, beginning with talking about the weather? Another example is the way human thinks about time. It differs a lot around the globe. If you made an appointment, how important is it to turn up in time? And actually, what does in time mean? When are you late? And what happens if you are late? What will the people around you think? And how will they react? With a good coaching, information and communication, some of the social codes and local expressions can be presented and explained before the person faces them in real time. There are lots of valuable potential to gain from the individuals that are moving in. By not giving access to the society, you will not fully use that potential living here. That's why it's important to remember that the quest of a better life rarely, if ever, is fulfilled at the bottom of a society. In general, people want to contribute to the society and fulfill their dream. So, what can we do to include the newly arrived and to speed up the process? Yeah, you need to clarify the dream to make it come true. If you have a clear dream, you will strive. You will constantly try to build a better life. If working with integration and inclusion, this should always be your focus. Be genuine and interested and include the individual in the process. It is essential to begin with asking about their dreams and interests. In this kind of coaching, 
you should also be prepared to take an active role to remind that the dream should not be affected by past restrictions that the person had before migrating. The country you grew up in often offers a different kind of access. A social network of family and friends combined with a know-how about society's function, like know where, knowing where to find answers to your questions. You also have an idea of what expectation you can have on your life and what the expectations on you are, both private and professionally. Moving to a new country, you need to figure it all out again. Learning the language and getting a job is not enough to get a total access to the society and its cultures, nor is it enough to find out which road you should choose to fulfill your dream. Obstacles and possibilities in your foreign home country does not necessarily migrate with you. The conditions will most likely have changed. Individual support is not only good to visualize the dream and get information, but also to figure out possibilities and obstacles in the new context. A personal network is also an important and valuable key of being included. It is in the interaction with others that you define and develop yourself and find answers that are hard to find elsewhere. Every society is built on cultures, but culture is not one thing. Society is built upon the interplay of cultures that exist within a specific area. Some cultures are local and some have a more global character. So, by knowing a person's interests, you can use that information to include the person by introducing them to others who share the same interests. Like being a poet, where is the library? And is there a poet society somewhere? Being a drummer, is the band missing a drummer? It is in the interaction that you can feel included and be a part of a culture that you actually already are familiar with. The result will be an inspiring, including and supporting network. To fulfill the dream, it's also very important to keep up the motivation. The key to find out how is to include to interaction and dialogue. In the beginning, it is likely important to focus on learning how to speak the new language as well as figure out how to build a social network. In a new society, you might need a push in the right direction to find out where to go. It is always not the same place at all, all time. Having worked with integrations in multiple in organizations from both public and third sector, my experience is that the most important ingredient to include people is trust. Trust is required to build up motivation and to keep the motivation up, no matter the mindset of the person. Trust is also imperative to lower the threshold for asking about things that may otherwise feel awkward to ask about. Things that cannot be explained within the person's normal frame of reference. Let me give you two examples. The first one is a question asked in confidence by a man. He felt compelled to ask the question that had been yeah, actually bothering him for months. And the question was, are men not allowed to work in this country? He explained that every working person he had met so far had been a woman. As we started to sort through his worker context, his question came into a new light. He had been in contact with social workers, healthcare workers, the Office of Social Insurance, the employment office, the tax administration, and the grocery store. All predominantly female places of work. After explaining this, he still saw it as a big mystery where all the men in the society were. Another example was a woman with reading and writing skills from the elementary school. She had a dream, yet she was convinced that it would never come true. The dream was to become a chef. 
The fact that she had been at home with the kids, she thought that was one of her biggest obstacles. Usually she answered that she had done nothing and that she had no works, working experience whatsoever. What she didn't tell the, the employment office was the fact that not only did she take care of her own children, but also the children of her siblings and some additional kids living in the neighborhood. All in all, about 20 kids, wanting breakfast, lunches and snacks daily. On top of it all, she was also preparing the dinner for the children and the children's parents after work. And that's still not content from the livestock and cultivation that she also was taking care of. Maybe it's just me, but when I close my eyes, picture me doing nothing. It does not involve 20 children and cooking. The African culture has a globally known saying, it takes a village to raise a child. It is just as true as the context of including people in general. The new normal should be to not leave inclusion to others, but to figure out what you can do to contribute to participation and conclusion in the society. Be aware that you are sending out messages all the time. The questions you are asking, the ads and websites you are producing, or even by invitations to your events. The new normal should be to include everyone, not just by saying everyone is welcome, but also act like it. Start by saying hi. The new normal should be to value experience in general, to send out the message that not only formal education and work experience is valuable. If you, as an authority, want to reach everyone living here, be aware of how excluding the word citizen is. It takes years to become a citizen. And even if you are planning to live the rest of your life in the country you migrated to, you don't have to be a citizen. You don't even have to apply for it. If you want to contact newly arrived people to talk about your company, the best channel may not be an ad in the local press. If you want to invite all the people to an event, knowing that newly arrived don't yet have a big social network, have you considered to offer a babysitter during it? And think twice. Did you get all the important information? Did you remember to inform about the address? Not everyone knows where the clubhouse is, even though you are crystal clear about it being just north of the roundabout. So making the society sustainable is to reflect over your own situation as well as reflect on others. What would it take to make the society even better? How are we empowering everyone to participate and contribute to our common society? Worldwide, as humans, we will always have one question in common. Is staying where I am an attractive alternative or are my opportunities better elsewhere? If we all accept and agree to participate in building a society together, we will make a new, inclusive, sustainable society that also will be for everyone.